In this video, I'm going to be sharing you 10 tips, 10 that I have learned from Atomic Habits, the book by James Clear. He's one of the top self-development bloggers. He has been for a while. And just like Mark Manson before him, he published his book and it blew up, sold over a million copies, happy for his success. I want to share some tips from the book, which are actually, some of these tips are very eerie because I discovered them on my own and they worked really well. There's some I disagree with, but there's some that I'm like, that's some good stuff there. I know this works because I use it myself and that's, that's so great. So their very first tip, and I think this is like one of the big summaries of the book by the name itself, um, form a baseline habit. So a baseline habit is something that you have to do in a very tiny amount so that you form that habit as a baseline. And without that foundation, you can't really turn it into a habit. So what that means is choose something and do it for two minutes or less. He says, two minutes or less, no more. You have to stop after that. And uh, this could be, you know, exercising for two minutes a day, journaling one sentence a day, writing for two minutes a day, something along those lines. You have to stop before it becomes a chore. And then you start to lengthen it. Um, so then it becomes three minutes, four minutes, five minutes. Um, this is one of the keys to how I've maintained a very, very consistent fitness routine over the years. I've seen people come and go at the gym all the time and disappear never to be seen from again. I've maintained it for over five years going or on average about four to five times a week for about an hour and 15 minutes on average each session. And I started um, maybe five years ago, five and a half. Um, before that, I spent eight years struggling to stay consistent, figure this out, and it works like a charm. I started with, I think it was five minutes, and that became too easy too quickly. So after about like a very short time, it went to 10. And then um, the one thing I would add that James didn't mention is if you, you really can't lengthen it too quickly. I learned that the hard way. I lengthened it to like 30 minutes too soon. After like a couple weeks, it was too much. Luckily, I ratcheted it back down to 15. It saved me. And ever since, um, more or less, it's been pretty smooth sailing. Tip number two, change your environment. So there's many ways of changing your environment. You can make a bad habit more challenging to do, a good habit more easy to do. In the self-help world, I've heard this a million times, but if you're young and new, you may not have heard this. Um, get rid of the cookie jar. Either don't bring it into your house, or if it's in your house, put it somewhere unreachable, like locked in a closet on the top shelf or something. The harder it takes to reach your remote to watch TV or eat junk food, the less you're likely to do it. Same thing with good habits, you know, put it in front of you. Get those celery sticks right in front of you at the table while you're working. Okay, tip number three. Um, instead of trying to adopt a habit, adopt an identity. Now, this is what, a fresh one. Usually, I know all the tips already since I'm very plugged into this world. He says, rather than trying to run a marathon, adopt the identity. Say, I am a marathon runner. Don't say, I want to run a marathon. I'm a marathon runner. Rather than saying, I want to quit smoking, say, I am not someone who smokes. So you're not adopting a habit. You're adopting an identity. That was a, that was a game changer um, when I heard it. Number four, habit stacking. So this has been a new fad, and it's... Uh, it's more than a fad. It's a actual scientific thing. And a lot of people have talked about it, uh, as well as um, Ben Hardy. He wrote a book on it. Um, the basic idea is, you know, habits work based on our neurology, neurology and brain chemistry through a trigger, a response, a reward. So what if you triggered a habit off another habit? And then once you had those two linked, you add another habit, and then you just you got this chain of habits going. So one example might be um, chaining a 
habit that's enjoyable but not so helpful with one that's rewarding but not so fun and then another that's enjoyable so watch a YouTube video do 10 burpees check Facebook see that's that's one of many uh, in the book I think he referenced one that was about uh, brushing your teeth okay Tip number five, research shows that people do things that are more convenient and obvious to them. Sounds simple, but it has subtle, dangerous implications. The prime real estate on grocery store shelves are the eye level items because they're right in your view on, uh, on the store, as well as stuff at the end of aisles. So uh, how can you make your day more uh, convenient for you. Maybe if you want to drink more water, put that everywhere. Put it on your cabinet. Put it on your table. If it's not water, it's an apple. Same thing if you want to play more guitar, put that guitar in the middle of the room. Don't tuck it away. Put it right there where you can't miss it. You have to walk past it to get to it, to get around. You get the point. Um, step, tip number six is um, Basically, hacking every step of the four-step habit process. So first of the first point of that is knowing the four-step habit, habit process. So um, I'll make that step six, and then we'll talk about the other ones. So the four-step process, as I mentioned, is trigger, action, reward. There's now a fourth one, and it's craving. So between trigger and action, there's a craving in there, at least... You know, he says there is. So, step eight, once you know the four steps of how habits work, um, you can hack them in various ways. And I'll tell you one hack for step eight, and that is to inverse all four. I mean, my mind's blown. Never heard this before. So let's say you want to break a bad habit. Invert it. Make it harder for you to have a trigger and a craving. Change your environment so the trigger or craving becomes invisible. Um, once a habit is wired into the brain, the craving will always be there when triggered. So don't have that trigger anymore. Um, uh, I like to say, you know, when you're trying to lose weight and you always drive through the same road and then you always get fast food, try driving a different road. I know it's easier said than done, but, you know, if that's a serious trigger, that's one way where you don't have to even see it and that will stop the craving. Um, you can also, also alter cravings by changing the mindset of I have to to I get to. You get to wake up early rather than you have to. Um, a guy in a wheelchair told James that uh, he is grateful that he's in a wheelchair, not bound by it because it allows him the freedom to move rather than get stuck in bed. So I found that a nice refreshing tidbit of a simple shift in perspective. Um, was I a little skeptical that that would change everything? Yeah, um, but at the least, I think it makes you happier. It definitely maybe changes your attitude a bit. Um, may not fix everything, but there you go. Uh, tip nine, I, I want to talk about stuff that I maybe disagree with a little or don't think they're as big game changers. One thing he said, and this is tip nine, is getting more motivation is like forcing a faster rate of water through a bent water hose. You can do it, but it'll cause a lot of tension. It's much easier to reduce points of friction. So you're unbending the water hose and making the hole bigger so more water can flow through. Um, so his whole point is, you know, stop trying to get motivated all the time. Instead, reduce friction. You know, lay out your clothes before you work out the next day so you don't have to do it the day of. And increase friction for the things you shouldn't be doing, like watching TV. You know, I get what he's saying, but I this is the one that I really don't think is that impactful. Um, I've tried those tactics, those little tricks and hacks of friction, and I think there's a lot more to motivation than ignoring motivation and using the friction. I think um, rather than relying on reducing or adding friction, 
Um, there's so much more you can do. If you find something you're really passionate about, that can change. There's sometimes a dozen, a hundred different ways of accomplishing a same thing, like getting exercise done. So another way is uh, trying all sorts of different things, Zumba, Spin City, until you find something that is fun. I mean, there's a lot I could talk about, but this video is getting long, so you get the point. Tip number 10, the last tip for the day. And by the way, if you want all the tips, more than 10 tips, I have a book summary of Atomic Habits, which you can search and find on my website, willyoulaugh.com. Um, the final tip is on, ooh, let me pick a big one because there's a lot of good ones here. Okay, how about this one? There will be days when you don't want to do it because you're tired or bored. Doing it on these days is what separates winners from average people. You know, I've had this told to me, you know, there's been days I didn't want to go to the gym. It was like the fifth day of the week and that day I didn't want to go. And people have told me, you know, these are the days you, you want to go. That's that's going to be a game changer. Um, it does help, but I think what's helped me more is, and this is a little secret for me, I get very much more motivated by... Um, the focus of any game-changing moment where I do something that I know the masses aren't doing. So, so rather than focus on the boredom or tiredness or, or how uh, you know, it's this is the day you want you should do it. Um, I think, you know, this, all the re the rest of it, that's not as impactful as this one moment when all the masses. Most people don't want to do it. If I could just do a little bit this this day, two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, that's going to be huge because now I'm above average. And, and that really excited me. It's a celebration. It's a moment of excitement, almost a realization that it's possible. And that can really uh, multiply by building momentum like a snowball. So subscribe, like, comment. Um, Helps the algorithm, I think, maybe, so I'm told, and I'll see you in the next video.